Uh, good afternoon to all. Um, yeah, um, ideally, um, research data from uh, your PhD research would be open totally. They, it would be funded, accessible, interoperable, usable. But in practice, uh, there are limitations why certain research data cannot be open. Um, it's it also important to understand that uh, fair data does not mean that they are or can be or cannot be open. Fair data just means that you have provided like really quality data, uh, taking into consideration all aspects of uh, managing research data, which you can later open or not at all. Now, the questions that we have uh, in the chat already is something that I will also ask Professor Marvin to uh, help me with the answer. I understood that um, at least part of the PhD thesis uh, needs to be publishable. It means that not totally all data can be closed forever, data from PhD research. Um, Now, uh, at the University of Ljubljana, uh, now we have this obligation uh, to uh, manage research data, but uh, we do not really have the rules uh, which data can, uh, are allowed to not be open, but we are instead using uh, recommendations which are valid for the whole Europe. And uh, this is probably the best way to do it since uh, your PhD research is probably part of research funded nationally or by the European Commission. And we have exemptions from open research data written in the new Slovenian Research um, Activities Act, which came into, um, uh, which became valid with, with the beginning of January this year. And uh, this uh, act, Uh, will tell us later um, what can or cannot be open, but generally, if your research is funded or not, there are some things that you always have to observe. There are some legislative or security reasons uh, why uh, certain research data cannot be open. So uh, your research data might be uh, under the uh, protection of, copy of uh, intellectual property rights. Uh, could be either the Copyright and Related Rights Act or any type of data that you would like to use later to file a patent application or uh, protect your mark or whatever. So this is something that is um, handled or protected by the Industrial Property Act. Regarding personal data, uh, the General Data Protection Regulation, GDPR, uh, is directly valid in all EU member states. Uh, but in Slovenia, we also have the Personal Data Protection Act, uh, the one that is still uh, valid now. It's not yet fully um, aligned with general data protection regulations, so we use GDPR directly. Uh, there are reasons that uh, it might be that your research data would be used in a way that could jeopardize security of either people, humans, or um, countries, not our country, uh, this is also the reason not to provide uh, your, not to provide public access to your data. Uh, if your research is done uh, in a way that uh, companies are included, you have probably signed an agreement, a contract. Uh, so it's the usually tripartite uh, contract, uh, the student, the PhD student, uh, the faculty and uh, the company. And in the contract, you usually agree on the authorship or on, on the property uh, or of data, any uh, the way you will use uh, results and so on. Uh, so besides these general rules on exemptions of open research data, you only have to you also have to uh, respect uh, provisions of uh, such a contract. Uh, this is really important. Uh, because um, disclosure or open access to research data, which should not be open, will be considered as breach of contract. And this is something that um, I'm not really sure how to answer. Uh, the University of Ljubljana is a public university and uh, there should be enough information in your PhD thesis uh, to prove 
uh, that the results uh, of your uh, research are valid, but uh, even if all data cannot be close, uh, cannot be open, it should be somehow available, either anonymized or, I don't know, with limited access. This is something probably that we'll still discuss. Uh, the Slovenian Research uh, and Innovation Activity, Activities Act uh, has uh, at least uh, three articles on open science and Article 41 determines open access to scientific publications and research data. The second paragraph is about uh, the research results. Research results uh, means not only research data, but any other types of, uh, of results uh, from uh, research. Uh, so they have to be open, uh, research results have to be open and uh, available, but uh, limitations resulting from uh, intellectual property rights, uh, personal protection, uh, protection of personal data, uh, protection of security of people and country have to be observed and are valid. And uh, even in our, already in our research act, we have uh, fair principles. So open research data have to be findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. Uh, the third paragraph of article 41 uh, speaks about uh, processing personal data as research data. Uh, informed consent is very important. Uh, so uh, personal data as research data can be reused again for the same purpose as agreed by the individual in the original uh, informed consent. Otherwise, uh, new informed consent is needed. And uh, public research organizations, this is the fourth uh, paragraph, can establish uh, thematic data centers for processing personal data as research data. Uh, you should consult GDPR more in detail. They speak there about um, um, using data for research as well. But uh, it is important that it's not exaggerated. Whatever you do with personal data, it's within the limits of the informed consent and uh, GDPR. Uh, the new uh, Personal Data Protection Act in Slovenia is being prepared. The last draft uh, has a chapter there. And, is, and has special rules. Uh, you will not uh, be uh, lost in the darkness how to uh, use personal data. You will consult this chapter uh, on uh, processing personal data for scientific research. At the University of Ljubljana, as uh, any other research institution or institutions being processors of personal data, we have a data protection officer and uh, the lady, she's really very nice. Uh, she said that definitely you should contact her if you need any adv advice how to process your personal data as um, research data in your PhD research. Uh, we have mentioned the informed consent uh, a few times already. Uh, there are tools that enable you to compose uh, such a document uh, without starting from scratch. Uh, let's say uh, Daria, it's a uh, European infrastructure. Uh, they have um, formed, they have established a wizard which asks you different questions. What will you do with your data? Uh, and um, uh, at the end, uh, you get out a template uh, consent form which you can use for the participants uh, of your study. Now you have your data already and cannot be open, but there are two procedures that you could apply over your personal over the personal data collected in your research. It could be either anonymization or pseudo anonymization. Uh, with anonymization, uh, the data is really um, made anonymous totally. Uh, it cannot be uh, converted again to identify individuals. Again, there is a tool which helps you to do this, uh, amnesia, open air amnesia. Uh, the, the other procedure, pseudo anonymization, um, is done in a way that you replace identifiers of, you, you, you replace uh, exact uh, personal data with identifiers, but uh, the literature says that uh, there is more risk of re-identification. 
uh, Sonia mentioned that uh, social sciences uh, data archive from Ljubljana is part of the European network. So this is CESDA, uh, um, Consortium of European Social Science Data Archives. And their advice is that uh, somehow uh, you could uh, share personal data if you uh, use different um, types of handling. Now you have the informed consent, which allows you to do certain things, you anonymous data, or you uh, limit access accordingly to the consent. In certain uh, research fields, um, you do not create research data anew, but you use uh, data either from uh, data repositories or national statistics or commercial databases. Uh, this is good. You, you obtain some uh, conclusions from this data to confirm or reject your hypothesis, but you are not the one that could uh, make this data set that you were using public. So here you really have to uh, take into consideration the agreement or license. If, you, if your institution subscribe, subscribes uh, to a database, a commercial, commercial database, let's say with financial information, or company data, you have to observe what that license allows you to do. Usually it's not allowed that you uh, use or take your data subset and publish it as your own created data, but you have to cite uh, where you got the data uh, in the list of your references. Uh, as Professor Skochai has really uh, explained in detail, you really have to um, write down in your PhD uh, data management plan, uh, how will you handle the data, especially if this is something that cannot be uh, public. Uh, the two versions uh, of the PhD MP, uh, the first version, it's uh, more generally, it's something that you anticipate, but then at the end of research, you will already know what has happened and you can uh, write down everything that influenced your decision uh, to open or not open uh, research data. Um, now, these are different uh, reasons. Um, it could be that you have to protect the results, confidentiality, security, personal data, privacy concerns and so on. Uh, but then uh, we get questions, okay, uh, I have a lot of raw data, do I have to make it all open, uh, even they, if they are not uh, sensitive, uh, or only data needed to validate the results presented in the PGT thesis, then there are data, you will probably have to probably have to publish uh, articles, uh, which is a sort of a PhD studies requirement. Uh, again, here, uh, publisher will ask you to provide access to data underlying the uh, manuscript that you were submitted to the publisher. Uh, this is something that um, you and your mentor will basically decide. And this is the decision that you will write in the final uh, DMP. Uh, as a general rule, this is something that we do not have as yet uh, written uh, in uh, rules for uh, the University of Ljubljana PhD studies, but generally uh, the recommendation is that whenever um, the data cannot be open, at least you have to provide uh, metadata um, information on where such a data is available um, and uh, any other uh, information. Uh, this probably serves uh, that uh, researchers would not uh, replicate, would not uh, duplicate uh, data creation, uh, and they could contact you uh, in case uh, if you have already produced such data. Uh, whenever you deal with um, data that cannot be public, it's really important uh, that uh, in all phases of uh, the research data cycle, you are very attentive, very careful what you do, uh, not to open or have some slippage of uh, data that could not um, 
be uh, repaired later. And um, this is in short all. Um, I beg for your forgiveness since none of, our, none of us are really specialists on what we are presenting today, but it was our best effort uh, to introduce to you uh, research data management at the basic level, and we will have really good experts <laughs> at next webinars, but Sonia from this webinar, she is an expert, so this, uh, my remark does not concern her. Thank you very much. <laughs>